You are now entering the LuxCore Studios. And you've secured a seat for the Protecting Your Radius podcast. Here, Here, we build connections from your contracting profession to some of the top bleeding edge products and services. Don't get deterred. Let's not delay. Here is your host, Nathan Downs. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Protecting Your Radius podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Downs. And on today's episode, we have Katherine Mills Reynolds. Uh, she works for the American Fence Association and has a really cool title that I've already struggled a handful of times trying to say. So I'm going to have Catherine tell you exactly what her role is with the AFA and welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's so great to be here with you. Um, my official title is Director of Government Relations and Industry Standards. Okay. And um, I'm only a month in, but I have been in the fence industry for uh, over a decade. My father started and still runs Mills Fence Company out of Cincinnati, Ohio. So um, I am a fence girl in my blood. My um, cousin actually co-owns it with him as well, John Lytle. Um, but before I went into the fence world, I had already been there as a child just hanging out. Right. And all of you all who have family fence companies understand what that's like. Sick from school and you get to hang out in the wood shop and play around <laughs> during the day. Um, but uh, officially, I um, just started working there, well, about 15 years ago. But before cool. that, I worked in the government relations world and I was um, a lobbyist and government relations specialist for the Cincinnati Chamber of Commerce. Okay. So um, it is association, very similar to the American Fence Association and how they operate and how they work. Um, before that, I had worked for a couple senators um, and uh, I'm sorry, congressional folks on the Hill in D.C. So um, had worked on some statewide legislative issues. So I so I have a bigger background probably in this than people realize. Right. Um, the last few years, I've been on the board of the American Fence Association as a board member. It's just been a wonderful experience. I've really gotten to see what the AFA does. And one of the things they asked me to do on that board is to start a government relations committee. Yes. Um, and when we started that, it was like the floodgates opened up with needs that our members had. Um and so it wasn't long after just the, the board talked and, and thought we need to maybe make this a full-time position because we have that much work to keep it a full-time job. So, um, like I said, I'm just a month in, but I'm already busy and have a lot of, lot of cool things that we're working on. And if you think about it for the association, um, we met last summer yeah. at, uh, mid years, um, in Oklahoma city. And that was the first time I met Michael Reed. Uh huh. And when we did, so a lot of people don't know, because there was only 40 of us in the room, uh, we went through, remember when we put the thing, yeah, Michael put yes. all the things up on the walls, yeah. and we were talking about initiatives for the industry, mm -hmm. for the association, like mm -hmm. what were things that were important? And you s stood up first and started talking about government relations, and I was like, that is right, yeah, absolutely. Right. But you know, like, I didn't even ever think that that was a thing until you yeah. mentioned it. And then until the, um, really Michael and his team put that at the forefront of understanding like what there was out there and everything. So your background is um, immense, obviously, in that space, being a lobbyist and working on all those things. So why is that important for the layperson? Because you said all that really cool stuff, Catherine, and I'm like, yeah. that's awesome. I'm just a fence guy. You know, right. I'm like sitting here trying to be like, that sounds great. But yeah. what does that mean for me? from you and the association to those of us that are have businesses that are fencers or are running them? Yeah. Well, um, so coming from the family fence company and having this background, you guys deal with this. Your company deals with governmental regulations all the time. We yeah. just don't always say the term government relations, but that's exactly what we're doing. When you have to go through getting permits, getting variances, getting licenses in your state, looking at building codes, all these things are under the big tent of government relations. Okay. And when you have an issue with them, how do you solve it? Right. So um, that's my specialty is finding those issues and hearing about them and then trying to solve the problem. So when I w worked at the uh, Mills Fence Company, I did a lot with our um, variants, working with city officials, state officials, um, we actually got a lot of labor through um, H2B visa programs, which is something okay. that probably a lot of you might be familiar with or get employees from. Again, that's a governmental type of relations work and, and securing those workers. 
So there's a lot of things that we do every day that really are called government relations. Yeah. So, um, and just to talk to you about what does that look like? So one thing that I'm focusing on specifically is working with our chapters. We have so many awesome, great, strong chapters throughout the country. And um, well, part of my job is to talk with them and see what are the things that they're facing struggles with in their state and their local municipalities, and how can I, as um, a representative of the AFA, help them navigate a system which can be really complicated if you are not familiar with it and get them some results that they need or point them in the right direction. Yeah. So we've already, I mean, before I even started this job, there was already a major licensing issue happening in Florida, mm -hmm. which if passed would have um, basically taken a lot of our guys out of the market. It would have forced them to get costly and, and often prohibitive uh, general contractor license. So uh, luckily, the AFA was able to work with Home Builders Association, our um, AFA chapter down in Florida, their chapter members, chapter president, yep. and and work with them to get some alternative legislation that Governor DeSantis did just sign at the end of June. So that was a huge win for the industry. It basically anything that helps our guys and gals keep working, keep making money, keep installing fence is what we're trying to do. And we don't want the government to get in the way of that. Right. We want to help them help us. Um, and you know, it's funny, we, we were in a meeting today at, at the same meeting yep. and I, and I can't remember who said it. So it was not my quote, but I loved it. But a gentleman said, if you are not at the table, you're on the menu. Yes. And the problem, yeah. you know, it's so true because for, uh, contracting and construction, there are tons of lobbyists out there. Mm. You've got so many nationwide, but sensing often gets left behind. And so this is an opportunity for us to not be on the menu anymore, but an opportunity for us to be at the table talking about ASTM standards. We're working on a big issue right now um, with the New York chapter where the state of New York is um, doing a, their, their code that they just changed their state building code three years ago, basically goes directly against our ASTM standards. And so when that happens, we have this conundrum where our manufacturers, like Nationwide, D&D Technologies, mm -hmm. they're all working with this initiative uh, through the chapter and with me, where they are designing things correctly to ASTM standard. But if these installers in New York install it the way the code says, they break the manufacturing warranty, which we all know the liability that that brings into play. Right. But if they do it the way the standard says, then they're a lot of times they're not getting their pools um, passed for inspection. So these are a lot of things that we face every day as um, in the industry, construction industry, and that's on the manufacturer. That affects manufacturers and contractors. Absolutely. So a lot of these issues do both. It's just different sides of the same coin. For over 30 years, Southwest Automated Security has been the premier provider of gate operators, access controls, CCTV, and so much more. Visit southwestautomated.com today, taking dealers to the next level. Um, and we're working right now to try to change that um, in New York. So I, I'm, we've got so many smart people in the industry, but they're running companies. Right. They're developing new, um, new technologies, and they don't really have time to go through the government nitty gritty and track these things down, but that's what I can do for them. Absolutely. So I can take their brain trust of knowledge and just help kind of um, just construct it in a way that is just really easy for these government officials to see what we need and how to have wins, hopefully, throughout the country for the fence industry. I, I completely agree with everything Catherine <laughs> said. I mean, on top of that, I was thinking there's been other circumstances that us that are doing fence and, and building gates and all those things, yeah. we've seen where when government doesn't understand what we do right. or there isn't a voice for us, mm -hmm. we're getting... You know, then that's when the bureaucracy comes in. That's when the problems occur. Yeah. Because what we don't want to have happen as professionals is we don't want to have, you know, government officials coming in telling us how to build our jobs that's right. when we know the right way to build a job. That's right. Now, it's prudent on us as business owners and us as contractors to do the right thing and make the right choices. But that being said, you've seen that already where there have been times where, you know, people are getting up in arms about different things and then you come to find out it's just because the government body doesn't understand or they weren't educated. That's so right. I, I feel like, Catherine, your role is going to be vital in the future 
for our industry, just making us better. You know, I talk about that all the time on the podcast. Like, we're just trying to be more professional. Like, we want to, yes. we want to be held as a, you know, like a plumber or an yes. electrician. Like, I, we want that respect because I know and you know, yeah. growing up in the business, this is hard. It's hard. It's not easy. Yeah. And it's very confusing often for yeah. a lot of people that don't do what we do. Like, I don't understand why you dig a hole and do right. this and then you build this this way or why do you do that? So I think it's vital what, what you're doing is awesome work and stuff like that. If anybody has, so what's like the process? I was thinking if anybody has any needs yeah. for your services through the AFA yeah. or whatever, how can we get that ball rolling or how do you want people yes. reaching out to you for help? Yeah. So, um, so right now I am, um, like I said, I'm, I'm relatively new to this role. So I'm reaching out to chapter presidents in yep. the different parts of the country um, and just trying to get uh, just on their calendars, tell them about what we can help them with and their membership. Um, but if you're a general AFA member, of course, we're available to help you as well. So um, people can email me. I am on my email all the time, probably too much. Um, and it's just <laughs> Catherine, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, at AmericanFenceAssociation.com. That's probably the quickest way to reach me. Yep. Um, and I'm happy just to speak with you if you've got an issue that you're just wondering if that fits into what we're doing. I'm yep. happy just to talk you through it and see or um, if I can point you the direction to someone that might be. But but you hit the nail on the head when we think about, again, having a seat at that table. We all remember COVID and so many of our members were not essential business, which is Looney Tunes, because we do guardrail, we do safety, we do right. schools, we do uh, correctional facilities, U.S. government work. So when we don't have a voice at that table, someone is telling everybody else what we do. And a lot of times, like we're seeing with the code issue in New York, different parts of the country, even with Florida, they get it wrong. So it's really our responsibility as professionals in the fence industry to um, tell our own story and tell them what we're doing what our needs are and show them that, yeah, we are professional, intelligent, wise individuals. Our industry is so diverse, even from when Absolutely. my father started 53 years ago now. You know, back then we didn't have the polyvinyl products that we do now in the same way. And, and so many of the other technologies that are coming out, even the, um, all the like my salesmen, all the mm -hmm. computer programs that we have to help us in the business. So as you can see, just little by little, all of these areas have some type of either government oversight or intervention. And, um, and we just want to make sure that we're doing the best for our membership. And part of that is making sure our members' voice is heard and protected in the uh, governmental space. Absolutely. Well, I'm super excited for everything you're doing. We're appreciative already. The things that Catherine's already getting Moving along down the road, I think, is going to be vital to the future. And I know, like, for Oklahoma, yeah. um, I think Randy Ward and I mentioned yes. it to you. You know, we've got in our state, and every state's different, but, like, in our state in Oklahoma, um, we have a access control license that kind That's of right. bleeds over into gates. So it's something that we have to look at and understand the nuances of, like, we can do wireless solutions, but we can't do wired. And yeah. like who came up with these things, you yeah. know? So there's so sense, many, right? <laughs> there's yeah. so many things out there yeah. um, from government bodies that just don't make sense. Like no. that someone dreamt up and they're like, oh, we, we can gain a couple thousand dollars if we start having these guys pay us a couple hundred bucks a year or whatever, you right, know, right. that's how it feels yeah. to so us can on the outside. connect the dots and say, hey, let's do it a little more of a common sense manner yeah. and get jobs done and Hopefully not pay those fees as much. So, right. so yeah, so we're definitely here to help and um, our manufacturers. And and like I said, if you're a manufacturer as well, uh, certainly, like I said, with the issue in New York, that those yeah. are issues that affect you. And one thing that we've started to see is that a lot of these states building codes do not carry over the ASTM standards. And that can cause a lot of issues for um, people in our field and um, for the manufacturers who are designing things to be in that way. Yep. Um, and, and safety issues. I mean, if you were at FinsTech back in January, I'm sorry, February this yep. year, we had, um, we heard from the Quanbex with the Hummingbird Alliance, which is, um, a nonprofit that was started to raise awareness about gate safety. A little boy was tragically killed so, by a, a yeah. fall over gate that if they had followed the ASCM standard, it could have been potentially right. prevented. Um, so just, you know, we, we do so many things for people in the fence industry 
And we do save lives. We're protecting around pools. We're protecting kids in schools, our military, keeping um, you know, federal penitentiary is secure. And so we have a, a pretty high calling, I would say. Yeah. And it's important that we do that well, but then also make sure their message is getting out to our government officials that, hey, these are ways that you can help us help the broader community. Absolutely. Well, we're excited. Again, um, if Catherine gave you your email, if you have anything, we'll flash it up on the screen. Uh, if there's any any issues out there for many of you guys or gals that need to get with Catherine, yeah. Reach out to her. Talk to the office. I know your plate is getting fuller by the day. It is, but I like it. <laughs> but I it's like good. It's busy. good. We would rather keep you busy than not. Yes. Uh, you know, so yes. the resource, again, the resource, I think, to have the wherewithal that the that the board of directors knew that this was a time in the space. You know, they did that with Nick Reich last year. Yeah. In you know, creating a job mm -hmm. for because of the need. And yours, yeah. like, like I said, never even thought about that till yeah. last July and then seeing it going, this is like way bigger yeah. than I could have even ever thought. But that's exactly what we're trying to do with this yeah, kind of stuff. Right. Just create the content, get the information out there, make sure that everyone's aware of these resources uh -huh. and, um, and just make us all better so we yeah. can take people like Ken, like that <laughs> long legacy of, of success and building and for younger companies like Radius and other yeah. guys out there listening, that we can follow in the footsteps of giants and be better and safer Absolutely. while we're at it. So, Catherine, appreciate you being on. Thank you want to yeah, leave anything? Can I make one last yeah, slide? Sure. So, we have a wonderful government relations committee uh, that's made up of AFA members. And um, they really help me kind of uh, do some of this policy work, make sure we're up on the latest things. So if any of you out there are an AFA member and you are have a passion for government relations, or if you just have a big issue and you wanna um, get more into it, contact me and I'd love to kind of get you in the loop for when we have committee openings, we can um, keep you on a short list. Absolutely, so, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again for coming. Guys, we hope you get something great out of that and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks. You've been listening to the Protecting Your Radius podcast from the LuxCore Studios in Bixby, Oklahoma. Thanks for sticking around and connect with us and all of our partners at www.protectingyourradius.com. We want to thank our premier partners. LuxCore, the newest line of premium quality composite infill to slide into your fence track fence system. Frame your style today. Also, Stain Track the world's first patented standalone stain machine. Utilizing flood coat technology, Stain Track covers boards, pickets, posts, and any type of dimensional wood you can think of. And what better way to use your Stain Track machine than to use the easy application Wood Defender family of stains? Wood Defender goes on easy and covers in one coat with no back brushing. And of course, the true power of our show is you, the listener. Please rate and review our show on whatever platform you consume this content. Your five-star likes and reviews help other contractors get the message that we all want to be better and do better. And in the construction world, we can never forget that before you can be great, you've got to be good. Before you can be good, you've got to be bad. But before you can even be bad, you've got to try. <laughs>